So what about the ROS? Well, the ROS is the only replacement operation that guarantees long-term viability of the aortic valve and the aortic root. And we now have explants up to 40 plus years after the ROS procedure. And when we look under the microscope, you can still see that trilaminal structure that's uh, preserved with endothelial cells, interstitial cells, and extracellular matrix uh, in the body of the leaflet. And for those of you who are less familiar, let me just uh, rewind one step. A ROS procedure is uh, ROS procedure consists of replacing the diseased aortic valve with the patient's own pulmonary valve. The pulmonary valve is a mirror image of a normal trileaflet aortic valve. So it's a, in the vast majority of patients, it's a trileaflet valve. We transpose the pulmonary valve and root into the aortic position uh, while reimplanting the coronary arteries. And then the pulmonary root itself is replaced with a human cadaveric pulmonary root, a pulmonary homograft. So when I started my practice in Montreal, you know, with an interest in reconstructive valve surgery, one of the first questions we asked, how are we doing in our environment? Um, and again, Canada has a national healthcare system where all patients have access to care and to anticoagulation clinics. And so the first question we asked was, how are we doing with isolated elective mechanical aortic valve replacement in non-elderly patients? We defined them as people under the age of 65. So we looked at a cohort of 470 consecutive patients who underwent, again, isolated elective mechanical AVR, and we excluded anything that we thought may impact long-term outcomes, uh, concomitant procedures, coronary disease, reops, dissections, endocarditis, etc. cetera. Uh, mean age of the patients was 53, so not a particularly young patient population, rather middle-aged patients. Uh, and the mean follow-up was nine years and, and with 95% completeness of follow-up. And what we saw is that 10 years, there's already a survival difference between the, um, the, the cohort of patients undergoing isolated elective mechanical AVR versus the age and sex matched Quebec general population. And that gap continued to widen as the years went by. In fact, when we combined reoperation with mortality, although reoperation is a rare event with mechanical AVR, but it's not a zero event, <clears throat> survival free from reoperation at 10 years in a 53-year-old who's undergoing isolated elective mechanical AVR was a mere 82%. In other words, at 10 years alone, one in five of these patients was either dead or reoperated. And this was mainly driven by death rather than reoperation. Um, I had the privilege of analyzing these data from that randomized, one of the rare randomized trials in, in our open uh, valvular surgery literature. Professor Yacoub had randomized young adults to undergo either a ROS procedure or an aortic homograft root replacement. You may wonder why an aortic homograft, why not just a tissue valve or a mechanical valve? This was in the 90s, and in the 90s, aortic homografts were still widely used, especially in young people because of he their hemodynamic benefit. So the average age of these patients was 38, and the mean follow-up of these, the cohort was 10 years. And these were all comer patients. If you look at the cohort more carefully, 8% of these patients were operated on for active endocarditis, and almost half these patients were redo operations with the most frequent previous operation being a homograft aortic root replacement. So by no means were these patients destined to have very good long-term outcomes. And yet, when we looked at their survival up to 12 years from surgery, you can see that the survival of the Ross cohort is almost indistinguishable from that of the UK age and sex matched general population, whereas patients undergoing a homograft root replacement had a significantly lower survival at 12 years, similar to what we see with a tissue aortic valve replacement or a mechanical aortic valve replacement. Um, in fact, just two weeks ago at the AATS, Professor Yaku presented the update to that trial looking specifically at the Ross cohort of patients with now a mean follow-up of 24 years and a completeness of follow-up of 98%. So this is pretty very robust data. There's, we don't have anything in our literature that looks anywhere close to this. Uh, and up to 25 years, you can see that the survival of both the Ross cohort and the UK age and sex match general population is remains exactly similar between the two groups. And the uh, incidence of REOP at 25 years was 30% in that cohort. So pretty remarkable results and uh, a good proof of concept. And if you look at contemporary uh, uh, um, ways of doing the ROS, this is the my initial cohort in, in Montreal, which is very precious because we have 99% uh, completeness of clinical and echocardiographic follow-up on all these patients up to this day. 
thanks to the healthcare system and the and the captive population we have there. But just to show you uh, uh, some data of what that looks like using all of these things that I showed, the annulus and the sinuses remain a normal diameter in the first decade. The incidence of autograft regurgitation at 10 years is very low, whether patients were operated on for AS or AI. And the risk of reintervention is also very low at 10 years, whether patients were operated on for AS or aortic regurgitation. And the hemodynamics are exceptionally good. Um, and it, they continue to be unlike a biological valve that wears out over time. And I think why consider a ROS procedure in this day and age? Because it, it can really be done with similar operative risks. It can restore late survival, at least into the second, and now we have data into the third decade. It provides better freedom from valve-related complications, definitely better hemodynamics than a prosthetic valve, and excellent quality of life. 